Hey, hello there. It's Azriel Lawless. Once again, you've clicked your way into Hellavella. What is Hellavella? It's a channel where we talk about uh, everything to do with the new serial reading flow from Amazon called Kindle Vela. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, all you need is your Amazon account and any browser. It's optimized to be read on a phone. Uh, it's a new way to read stories, epic stories, some of them that just go on and on, one episode at a time, just like you watch television. A lot of these stories have seasons, and, uh, wow, you can just lose yourself in them and um, become friends with the characters. And just like when you watch any of your favorite serial television shows, just feel like, wow, this is uh, someone I want in my life, you know, uh, and know the characters and... Like I say, some of the stories just go on and on. I am a writer on this platform, and so I'm hoping you'll check it out. I do some reading on here. This is uh, another installment of Lawless Reads, where we read some of the free episodes that are available to you. Um, I am reading to you now from a story called Note by Note. I'm going to be reading to you from a story called Note by Note by Stella and George. This is a really different kind of romance, and I really like it. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything, but the most intriguing thing for me is that it's got music. Um, any, any kind of sitcom or uh, movie or whatever that's based in music, I, I'm all about that. So let me read to you now the synopsis. When the plain billionaire Finn Cooper is piloting crashes, an independent, capable woman leaves him questioning all he thought he knew about love. A, wor a world, a fateful flight from Sydney to Tasmania turns music teacher Jessica Turner's world upside down. In a search for answers about their mysterious circumstances, Finn and Jessica find themselves in a dangerous world neither of them could have imagined. Staying one step ahead of a deadly, of deadly forces makes falling in love a little complicated. So, all right, without further ado, here is episode one of Note by Note, entitled, Next Time I'm Definitely Flying Commercial. Somewhere in the Snowy Mountains, Australia, mid-July. Jessica moaned and hesitantly opened her eyes, quickly snapping them shut. Oh, man, her head hurt. The pain must mean she was still among the living. Taking a deep breath, she squinted against the sunlight coming through the shattered passenger side window. Raising her head, she wiped melting snow from her eyes and looked around. The entire nose of the plane was buried in a snowbank, the remnants of the windshield scattered across the instrument panel. What was left of the instrument panel? They were lucky. They, Finn! Jessica was afraid to look, but her eyes sought the pilot's seat anyway. She groaned. Finn. He was slumped over the controls. From a gash near his right temple, blood traced a path down his face and neck. Jessica swallowed her rising panic and nudged his arm. Finn. Not a sound or movement. Finn. She shook him more forcefully. Come on, Finley. You're starting to scare me. It was no use. Oh, please. This can't be happening. She slid her hand against his neck and felt for a pulse. Finn was still alive. She breathed a sigh of relief and leaned down to get a closer look at his wound. It didn't appear to be as deep as she had first feared, and the bleeding had stopped. Jessica unbuckled her seatbelt and carefully stood up. Her whole body ached, but nothing seemed to be broken or missing. Maybe it was better for Finn that he was out of it for now. She could only imagine how much his head would hurt when he woke up. Her hand trembled as she reached over to brush a dark lock from his forehead. Well, Finn, what now? I'm not good at this kind of thing. She looked for the radio, hoping against hope, but it was smashed. Great, she mumbled. We crashed in a plane, on a mountain, and I have no idea what to do. Wait, wait, cell phone. She had left it in her purse, which was, yes, still under her seat. She rummaged around inside and found her flattened wallet and broken compact. There's seven years of bad luck. Lipstick. Cell phone. The screen was cracked, and that wasn't a good sign. She tried the power button. Nothing. Damn it. You must have a cell phone, too. She checked the pockets in Finn's jacket, then his shirt. You're probably sitting on it. Jessica blushed and felt around the rear pockets of his jeans. Sorry, Finn. 
I don't make a habit of groping men, I don't know. Yes, and his cell phone didn't appear to be broken. Of course, there was no reception, but it was intermittent in the mountains. She would try later. Gratefully remembered that phones could be tracked even when they weren't on. She hoped that meant they might be rescued soon, but in the meantime, staring out the window, Jessica noticed the light fading. It would be dark soon. Snowy mountain winter days were way too short. As cold as it was now, it would be much colder, much more so overnight. From past visits, she knew temperatures could fall suddenly to as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius. Having survived the crash, she was not about to let them freeze to death. She made her way back to the cargo hold. It was still intact, but supplies were strewn all over the place. Jessica decided to check out their surroundings before she waded through the mess to look for anything useful. She managed to clear a path to the door and, after a struggle, pushed it open. Stumbling outside, she almost wished she hadn't. They were stuck on top of a hill. Next time, I'm definitely flying commercial if I ever get on a plane again. Her frustrated words echoed back to her as she trudged through the knee-deep snow toward the rear of the plane. Not an easy task in high heels, especially when one was broken. She had planned to change into her boots when they arrived in Tasmania. Her teeth chattered. A lot of good that does my freezing feet now since we didn't even make it to Tassie. As she worked her way around the tail, the extent of the damage she saw made her shiver more than her cold feet. It was amazing they had made it at all. Jessica let out a heavy sigh and fought back the tears that stung her eyes. As the full impact of what happened sank in, she gave in to her emotions. After a few minutes, she wiped a hand across her cheeks, irritated with herself. This is not going to help Finn or me. Scanning the horizon, then toward the bottom of the hill, she blinked several times, not believing her eyes. This isn't a desert, so you better not be a mirage, she shouted as she hobbled down the hill toward the cabin nestled in a grove of trees. Jessica was out of breath when she reached the front porch and pounded frantically on the door. Help! Hey! Is anybody in there? Please, this is an emergency. She reached out for the doorknob and pushed. Not locked, but jammed. Damn! Terrific. It appeared to be abandoned and would provide more shelter than an airplane buried in snow. I'm sure the owner won't mind if we use his facilities. She tried to lift the sash, but it was stuck. Oh, come on, she grunted. We need somewhere to shelter from the cold. Jessica leaned against the wall and pondered for her, her, pondered her dilemma. Wait, I knew all those hours of binge-watching MacGyver would pay off someday. She reached into the pocket of her jeans for her Swiss Army knife, hoping the blade wouldn't break from the pressure. She pressed it beneath the sash and tried to pry it open. It finally gave way. Yes, success! She climbed through the window, cautiously stepping inside. Hello? Anybody home? The cabin was a simple, one-room dwelling, but someone had been there, probably during hunting season. There was a huge sofa in the center of the room, an overstuffed chair, and a dining table in the corner of a small kitchen area. A few pots and pans sat on a nearby counter. Jessica approved. It's not the Ritz, but it'll do. Things were definitely looking up. Aware of the impending darkness, she realized there was no time to lose if she wanted to help Finn. Frostbite would set in soon if she didn't get him out of that freezing plane. Now that's the end of episode one, and just like with uh, all the episodes, the author has an option to write you a note at the end, and this one did. It says, thank you for reading. Just wanted to let you know that there will be mature content in a few of the episodes regarding sex. I will let you know at the end of a previous installment when a mature scene is coming up. Well, that's very kind. <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like note by note overall as you read, give it a fave. Now that's done on Sundays. Um, that's a really cool thing about Kindle Villa is you can vote for your favorite stories. And when you vote for your favorite stories, when, it, when the story gets enough votes, it gets a little gold crown on it. So you get to be part of that, see? Okay, and it says... Uh, mm, mm, give it a fave and in the next episode will Jessica be able to get Finn out of the plane and to the safe place before darkness falls and frostbite sets in well I'm willing to bet that's a big yes on that 
once again you have found lawless reads and today what we've read for you is the first episode of a musical romance called note by note by authors stella and george be sure and check it out for yourself i think you'll like it <laughs> 